Once every so often, an indie horror game pops up on Steam, which instantly gets added to the wishlist. Then that game comes out and you have the most fun from start to finish. Choo Choo Charles was one of those games. In this video, we'll be looking at this game, exploring where Charles came from, and what could potentially come next if there is a sequel. Now, given that this is a fairly new game, I'm late to the party, so sorry about that, there will be spoilers in this video. If you have a fairly capable PC and haven't played this yet, then stop the video and go and play it. Like I said, great fun. But before we jump in, a quick message from the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. Even though Christmas is over, you can still grab Atlas VPN's 85% off three-year Christmas deal for $1.70 per month plus six months extra. With over 750 servers around the world, connection to Atlas VPN servers is incredibly stable and really, really fast, which means if you're a gamer playing multiplayer horror titles such as Dead by Daylight, Devour or Phasmophobia, there'll be absolutely no lag. As well as that benefit, you'll also be safe from things like being DDoSed or even things like avoiding a lobby full of bots. Of course, it's not just used for gaming. As a sports fan myself living in the UK, it's extremely difficult for watching any US sports. So I just hop onto Atlas VPN, fire up whatever US-based streaming service I use, and boom, I can watch anything, whether that be NBA, NFL, or MLB. This is also really good for using in conjunction with Netflix, where you can turn on your VPN and use it to access Netflix servers around the world. Different servers mean different options. You can use it on multiple devices and Atlas VPN can also block any malicious links, ads and trackers, and it also notifies you if and when someone is trying to steal your data. Make sure you take up this awesome three year deal because now you can get Atlas VPN for just $1.70 per month plus six months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. So be quick and get your deal by clicking the link in the video or looking for the pin link in the comments section below. With all that being said, let's get into the video. The story begins with a man named Eugene, telling someone over the phone that something happened at the mines that he had been supervising, and that his friends and his son are trapped on a mining island called Araniram. Eugene states that they need something big to keep their museum running, and that there is something big on the island. The camera then pans to a photograph of a terrifying spider train hybrid. Shortly afterwards, our unnamed protagonist, referred to as an archivist, who is basically a monster hunter, meets with Eugene and travels by boat to the island. Eugene tells the archivist that they've been planning to kill this monster named Charles for quite some time, and they now have everything in order. Our protagonist needs to meet with local people in order to facilitate the plan. They arrive and all seems quiet. Eugene has the protagonist follow him to the top of a hill to a train shed. After finding a key for it, they enter and right there sits a beautiful yellow masterpiece of engineering. Eugene mentions that the train and the gun attached to it will be useful in taking Charles down before he even sees them coming. Then they hear it, the sound of a train whistle. It's Charles and he's very hungry. The protagonist jumps onto the mounted gun and unloads into Charles's grinning face. But fate catches up to Eugene and he's pulled from the train by Charles, who takes a few chunks out of him before taking off. Running to check on Eugene, our protagonist finds him in a sorry state. He's dying, but before he passes on, he tells the protagonist to find three eggs and to find his son. Now, a break from the story. This game is open world, so you can do things in any order you wish. Side quests are optional, but they do tell you a bunch of backstory and lore, and it wouldn't be much of an explain video if I didn't go over them. We'll tackle the side quests first as I encounter them in my game to ascertain what's going on here, and then we'll cover the main story missions afterwards. So here goes. The first side quest will the archivist meet with a man named Tony, who mentions someone, a madman named Warren. Whoever Warren is, he has some kind of connection to Charles. The man says the train will need some major upgrades if he wants to take down Charles. It gives him some metal scraps to improve the train. It seems that Tony was a farmer who had livestock. He made plans to buy feed for his chickens and goats and to fence them off, but cancelled those plans as Charles killed and ate all the livestock. The people on the island want Charles gotten rid of and clearly don't care what method the archivist uses in order to do so. That being said, there are people the locals call crazies, the people who just think Charles should be left alone. And this note mentions this Warren again, that Warren has seemingly lost his marbles. But Warren isn't the only one who's lost his marbles. The archivist meets with a woman who is literally obsessed with pickles. She ate the last jar and there's only one jar left on the island. So naturally, a rescue mission is in order. 
The archivist helps the woman out and gets rewarded with some scraps of payment. Crisis averted, I guess. The archivist helps out a man who is waiting for a boat to come rescue them. Our protagonist helps him by retrieving his journal from his home. Another woman asks the archivist to help with a ghost problem. She kept finding pages with drawings pinned to lampposts in the boulder fields and kept hearing ghastly noises, suspecting them to be the ghosts of former miners and colleagues. And this is obviously a subtle reference to Slender the Eight Pages. The protagonist also manages to obtain more superior firepower for the train, such as rocket launcher, an anti-aircraft gun nicknamed Bob, and a flamethrower. They also activate an old lighthouse, that way passing ships may see it and may come to help them. The archivist meets many more locals and meets with a swamp monster, which is essentially just an alligator named Barry, but in essence, through these side missions, this is what was learned. So the name Warren came up. A lot. Essentially, the Charles Mining Company would eventually be handed over to the family's son, Warren Charles III. Now, I'm not certain, but at some point the family could have bought the island, and Warren planned to mine there. He employed a load of people, and the employees themselves were under the impression that they would be mining for gold. This gold was much needed, as the Charles Mining Company was under financial strain, and setting up the mining operation on Araniram came at a considerable cost. Some workers even expressed their thoughts that Warren was taking a huge risk in trying to mine on that particular island. Nonetheless, the miners got to work, and this is where old mate Eugene came in. He was the supervisor in the mine, and one day the crew experienced a cave-in. Eugene then wrote a letter to Warren and informed him, asking him to come to the site and inspect it for himself. But against regulations, Warren didn't report the cave-in. You see, Mr. Warren never told anyone from the mainland about his mining operation here. He never even reported the cave-in. Why? Well, the crew had unearthed something fairly sinister, an underground cavern. The miners were at a loss and didn't know what they'd found. They'd actually found ancient ruins, ruins which actually existed above and below ground. Warren, while still having the miners work under the assumption of mining for gold, wanted to find more of these ruins. Eventually, whilst clearing the debris from the cave-in, the miners would discover some strange eggs. The eggs weren't the only thing they'd unearthed, though. They discovered a gigantic demonic spider. Now, a lot of people think that Charles took on some sort of spiritual form of a train. I don't believe this to be the case. I think that Charles wore a train car like some sort of armour to protect himself after being attacked by the residents of the island. It was the Charles Mining Company train car, therefore he was nicknamed Charles. This demon spider train hybrid would then go on to cause absolute chaos. The miners discovered a strange temple or a shrine located directly in the middle of the island, which housed a mysterious prism, which they discovered could be used to extract some kind of energy from the eggs. Then the miners decided to try and use this prism to destroy the eggs. This didn't go exactly as planned. The energy from the eggs was absorbed by Charles and he grew to be stronger, faster and even more aggressive. Warren immediately went into defensive mode, threatening to kill, or rather ordering his men, to shoot anyone who got near to the eggs. Hey! Who's that? Not only that, but Warren ordered Charles to be killed and brought to him. There was an evacuation at some point using a supply boat, but that boat never returned to collect more survivors. Now there were two differing sides on the island when it came to Warren's motives. There were people like Greg, a conspiracy theorist who thought that Warren wanted the eggs for himself, to sell them, or in Greg's eyes, to use them to achieve world domination. That's a bit of a stretch, but it's most likely that Warren wanted to sell them due to the company being in financial trouble. And then there were people like Gail, who actually thought that Warren was just trying to protect everyone on the island from Charles. Whichever way you think, Charles's men hid the eggs inside each of the three main mines as to protect them from people who were hell-bent on destroying them. But was this to protect or to preserve? Was Warren a bad guy, or was he just trying to protect the islanders? Well, it seems that Warren's men could have been a local gang from the mainland. A hired muscle, if you like. They wear masks which look very similar to Charles himself. This could be in the hope that Charles might see them as friendly and won't attack them. When the miners took the job, Warren not only moved them to the island, but their entire families too. And then he cut off all communication to the mainland. He also didn't report the cave-in to anyone. Some people on the island planned to escape the island and sue Warren because, it turns out, he hadn't even been paying them for their work. Was he sacrificing these miners to Charles? A church along with a sermon inside showed the Reverend speaking of sacrifices, and the church itself was covered in blood. Now, after all the odd jobs and favours have been dealt with, it's now time to learn the plan. 
A note regarding a mutiny shows us that the people on the island never wanted any harm to come to Warren, but that enough was enough. They needed to get rid of Charles once and for all. Eugene was sent to the mainland to make contact with the archivist. Eugene swam there despite a huge risk of death, but he made contact with the archivist, and that leads to the start of the game. The plan, as seen here, was to get the archivist to the island, and then they would set the train tracks accordingly. At some point on his journey, the archivist meets Greg, the earlier mentioned conspiracy theorist. Greg mentions that the eggs that Eugene, with his dying breath, mentioned earlier on, are hidden away in three of the mines, being guarded. Greg is concerned that if they hatch, they'll surely turn into monstrous creatures like Charles. Greg needs the archivist to steal all three eggs in order to bait Charles into a fight, so that they can destroy him. While going about his task, the archivist meets with Eugene's son Paul, and after breaking the news of his father's death, the archivist sets eight charges on a bridge. The plan is to lure Charles there and blow the bridge, destroying Charles for good. After collecting all three of the eggs, the archivist takes them all to the top of the shrine and starts to place the eggs in the prism. He is interrupted by none other than Warren, who tells him that he doesn't know what he's doing and that he'll hurt far too many people. Nonetheless, our protagonist places the final egg into the prism and a bright light emanates from it. A beam of energy shoots straight up into the sky. Warren says that the archivist has doomed them all and then Charles joins the party. He's furious that the eggs have been destroyed, but this is part of the plan. As happened previously, Charles is strengthened by the energy and gets bigger and more ferocious. Charles gobbles up Warren and chases the archivist. The archivist goes back to his train and fights Charles, weakening him and leading him straight to the bridge. And then the charges are detonated. Charles is flung into the air and dies a horrible, spiky death. The island and its inhabitants are free, or are they? The final shot from the game shows another cavern underground absolutely filled with eggs. This isn't over, not at all. Now I'm not sure whether this leads into a sequel or a DLC, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Finally, it seems that from the ruins being ancient ruins and from doing a side quest for a man who wants us to open a crate using lockpicks, we see from a stone tablet that Charles, or at least the massive demon spider, goes back millions of years, potentially to the stone age, as people with spears are depicted on the tablet fighting against a massive spider. The shrine itself was actually purpose-built for the eggs and is located in the center of the island. Another point to notice is that Araniram is Latin for spider's web. Quite apt considering this entire island is sort of a spider's web itself to trap victims. And what about Warren's motives? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. But that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, then please leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already. But for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.